Okay, welcome to ECO 501 section two. Today is Saturday, March 20. Okay, what we're going to do, uh, we've divided into two parts, like, just, uh, like I just said right now. In part one, we will look at some topics that will be focused on the uh, fi uh, final after the midterm. And then in part two, we will revisit or at least mention some topics that we covered in the first five weeks. Then what type of question format you may expect in the midterm. So let's start with Keshe. If you have any questions, just stop me and ask. Sir, when is the midterm? Oh, didn't you attend classes last week? Uh, sir, I couldn't, couldn't attend. Ah, so the, the, and you didn't look at the uh, video lecture that we uploaded later? Uh, I, oh. no, no, the one you uploaded in YouTube, I watched that, but the class lecture, I did not. Okay, and did you see the uh, PDF of the uh, slides? Uh, no, sir. I just uh, followed the YouTube uh, if video. You, if you did the, if you followed the PDF of the slides, it was mentioned right at the bottom. But anyhow, since you didn't get, catch it, then we'll uh, we'll discuss it again today. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, so basically today we're we're going to make a very little introduction to markets and a preview of uh, midterm topics. So first of all, we want to know how we define a market. That will uh, determine uh, how uh, the next part of our course will uh, proceed. Then we want to know what determines power of markets, uh, firms in a market. Finally, how many types of markets are there or how many types of markets will we be discussing? The reference will be McGuigan 339 to three, uh, page 350. If you look at your Facebook groups, then uh, you'll find that the uh, references have been uploaded there in, in, the, in the file column. And the learning outcome will be just a foundation for part two. Okay. Now, so far we have always discuss, uh, defined uh, markets as a place where, or institutional arrangement where buyers and sellers meet to transact a good or service. Okay, now, do we uh, look at the market in the number of sellers or do we look at the market in a number of buyers? Number of buyers. Not, uh, no, we're gonna look at it in the number of sellers. So uh, for example, Grameen phone is a seller, right? Yes, sir. Isn't Grameen Phone also a buyer? No, sir. No? Grameen Phone doesn't buy uh, uh, raw materials for, for its uh, machinery. Grameen Phone doesn't hire uh, people uh, in, in its firms. Uh, network transmission things and other stuff. They have to buy it. They have to buy it. So every firm is both a seller and a buyer. Okay. And then we have another interesting dilemma. For example, we have Dhaka Wasa, which is a state monopoly. It, has the, it is a monopoly that supplies drinking water in Dhaka city or piped water. But uh, uh, Dhaka Wasa is not a, a single buyer when it goes to buy its own components for its uh, machinery. There it has to compete with other people. So what we are going to do, we are going to look at the market by the number of sellers. Here we've defined it over here. Markets will be defined by sellers, not by buyers. So therefore, what we have is like this, this type of markets, monopoly, we have duopoly, we have oligopoly, etc. If somebody said that, uh, what happens if we de define the markets uh, by the number of buyers, then we would have had monopsony, duopsony, oligopsony. So we're just uh, defining the markets by number of sellers. Now, the next thing is, we are interested in commodity markets. Okay, let me stop share. What do we uh, understand as a commodity market? Does anybody know in this class what we mean by a commodity market? Uh, yes, sir. A commodity market is a place where people used to buy and sell daily product, daily necessary products like uh, Sir, commodity means good, sir, and not service. Commodity means good. Any kind of goods, not service. 
No, no, sir. It, it, it can also be service. But that's not a problem. Commodity markets is when we are not bothered about who we are uh, buying from. The person who's selling us is not bothered who he's selling to. Let me give you an example. For example, if we want to buy uh, a new Samsung phone, uh, any any uh, any series, say A series or the S series, uh, does it really matter which shop we are buying from if they are authorized dealers? No, sir. It doesn't matter. That means in a commodity market, we are transacting a standardized item, standardized good. But if we want to go for a haircut, okay, can we get a standardized haircut? No, it will differ from each barber. It will definitely barber. differ from one uh, barber to another, right? Uh, yes, if, sir. If we, we might buy ready-made shirts, which will be standardized. But if we want a tailor-made uh, jacket, a tailor-made suit or etc., will, will it be a standardized good? If we want a, stand, uh, a, 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 a nice haircut, can we go to any barber shop and uh, expect what we are going to get? Or does it depend very much on the barber, him, him or herself? It depends on the barber. It depends on the barber. That's why in a commodity market, we are transacting a, a standardized commodity. For example, we are trading rice. So if I, whatever rice I'm selling and another seller is selling, if it is the same type, it's the same type for, uh, for everybody. The other type of markets where we need to know what the seller uh, is, uh, for, so certain attributes of the seller, the seller have, needs to know some attributes of the buyer is known as matching markets. Uh, the, the one example that we gave was the barber. So if we know that this uh, Mr. X, the hair cutting will definitely be different from Mr. Y's hair cutting. So we need to know that uh, there are some special attributes of the, uh, the uh, hair, uh, hair cutter who's going to cut our hair. Okay. For example, your university is going to hire somebody. What, do, what did we learn up to now? Up to now, we learned that if the price goes up, then we, uh, uh, people, people start to supply uh, uh, that good more. But if Brack University doubles the salary, will, does that mean that Brack University will get a double the quality of, of, uh, of teachers or, uh, or staff? No, sir. That won't, that won't be. So those are matching markets. Okay. First of all, we will be looking at standardized markets, the commodity markets. Once we understand the commodity markets, then we're going to deviate to, to matching markets. For example, if you want to buy kidney, you know kidneys, uh, there is a market for kidneys in this world. People will sell and buy kidneys. Uh, yes, Black sir. Market. Organ markets. Oh, it's a, it's oh, a organ. market. Okay. Okay. Only country where uh, kidneys can be legally sold is Iran. Okay, but does that mean that if I need a kidney, I can just go to the shop and buy a kidney? No, sir. Even if I get it a kidney, yes, it, it has to match with the uh, patient's body. Right? So right, what sir. If, what yes, about exactly. the for blood? Uh, if, uh, 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 whoever is, uh, I'm B positive. So if I want uh, uh, blood, can I take B positive from anybody? Oh uh, no, sir. It has there is a mismatch. It has to be matched with my body, and then my, my body can take. Even if I'm willing to pay all the money in the world, I might not get the blood that I want. So those type of markets are matching markets. We will look at, look at them later on. So let's get back to the screen sharing. So commodity markets are markets where we are buying a standardized good. Okay, well, it's, it's a bottle of Pepsi Cola or Coca Cola. No matter which sub supplier we buy from, we know that it's the same thing. Matching markets have to meet certain conditions. Uh, a good example would have been a haircut. You can't go, go and take a haircut from anybody. Okay, you have to know how good or how bad that uh, that, that person is. Okay. Now the second question was. What determines power of firms? Again, we are defining firms as sellers, not as buyers. First of all, the first concept that comes into play is relevant market. We have given this example many times throughout the course of neighborhood, 
grocery shop, the Mudit Dogan. Okay. The Mudit Dogan in Dhaka city has no market power. But the Mudit Dogan in our uh, Goli has serious market power, right? The grocery shop in your uh, alley or in your neighborhood, doesn't it have a lot of market power? Sir, actually it depends on the ability of the like other Moody Dokans. If there's in a single one, then I don't think they they have the power. I mean, if I'm getting it right. Wait, wait, wait. If there is only one Moody Dokan, you say that that Moody Dokan doesn't have any power in the uh, neighborhood? I don't know. He has. If okay. uh, he's the single one, he has the power. Okay, but the if price of the street, where is it? Uh, so if you're saying that there's two or three, then the market power will be shared. But even if it is shared, one thing is clear that people from three uh, neighborhoods down the road, they are not going to come to shop in your neighborhood uh, uh, grocery shop, are they? Oh, uh, no, sir. They won't come. So what happens, whether the neighborhood shop is only one, two or three, they enjoy a geographical monopoly. Does that make, does that make it clear? Yes, sir. For Geographically, example, yeah, because uh, uh, the neighborhood uh, grocery, they, they have, uh, their market is uh, the people of that neighborhood. So you won't expect people from 10 miles away to come to your neighborhood uh, grocery shop to buy. So the, in the relevant market, the grocery shop enjoys some kind of market power. Okay, so it can uh, price its goods a little bit higher and still sell them because you know that if I don't buy it uh, two taka more, uh, ta taka more the eggs, you have to go to new market, which is say half an hour uh, uh, drive from your house to get it for two taka less. Will you go? You won't go. Because that neighborhood, Mudit um, Dogan, uh, uh, it enjoys a certain market power. So uh, what we will be interested in is how do these, what are the factors that determine market power in a relevant market? for a farm. Next one, this is also another example that we can give with the grocery shop, a concentrated market. Now, I live in Elephant Road, uh, uh, in the Cat's Eye building, and uh, just uh, opposite of my house is a multi plan. So in our uh, uh, goli, there are two or three uh, uh, grocery shops. Now, if I define the relevant market, Shatmoji Road, what will be what do we observe? At one end of Shakunji Road, you have Agora, a superstore. In the middle, you have Unimart. Uh, round about uh, 27, road number 27, you have uh, Kaji. What, what is that? Minawaja. Okay. So, uh, but apart from these three large uh, superstores, are there other grocery shops in Shakunji Road area? Yes, there are. Yes, sir. Definitely. Okay. Uh, there are lots of grocery shops which enjoy a local, a local monopoly uh, uh, due to geographical advantage within the neighborhood. But if we now define the relevant market as Shakmoji Road, we will see that uh, the larger uh, uh, the definition becomes that we will see uh, dominance of few large farms and many fringe farms. This is known as a concentrated market. Let me give you another example. There are thousands and thousands of producers of shirts and other uh, 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 dresses in Dhaka city. But how many designer shops are there? They are, they are very few in number, right? Very few, sir. Yes, sir. Very but sir. the number of total sellers, we, we see that this market is uh, divided. On one side, we have some very la uh, large farms. Over here in your text, you will see that the largest four farms are being used. This is an American definition. This blood done not necessarily has to be large four farms. In the context of our uh, Dhanmundi, uh, Shakrundi Road, we found that there are three large superstores. Okay, but the main argument is as the relevant market becomes larger and larger, some form, uh, farms enjoy what we will be terming as economies of scale. Because they are larger, their capacity is larger, their management skills become larger, their efficiency becomes larger. Okay, so 
uh, we have a concentrated market. Then what we want to look at, I've already given you the factors for which reason this happens. This is what we are going to try to look at. And why these things happen and in, and in what type of markets. Okay, uh, 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 well, we said that on one side of the market, there are a few large firms and the remaining part of the market, there are many small firms. Again, the grocery shops in uh, Shapmoji Road area, you have lots of small grocery shops at the same time you have, which are fragmented. Why are they fragmented? The total market share is very small in the entire of Shapmoji Road. Maybe not in their uh, relevant uh, neighborhood, but if we define, uh, change the definition to entire Shapmudin Road, we'll find that their uh, market share is very small. This one is a bit interesting. Why you get market power? Let me stop sharing. Okay. Uh, this is 2021. Does anybody remember 2005 Bangladesh? How old were you guys? I was quite old. Yes, sir. I can remember. You can remember. Okay. Uh, the, who said that you, you can remember 2005? Uh, it's uh, Zaid Hassan, sir. Zaid Hassan. Okay. Zaid Hassan, do you remember that there were many telecom carriers in Bangladesh in 2005? Telecom carrier, Mr. Yeah, the telecom Te carriers, you know, or telephone, telephone operators. Yes, sir. But people used to go there to make call. No, I'm not, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that, have you heard of Rand's Telecom? Rand's Telecom. Yes, sir. It existed at one time, and there were lots of uh, local uh, telecoms in Bangladesh. Some, uh, some telecoms were uh, operating in uh, coastal areas. Some telecoms were operating in Silet. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can remember in my hometown, I have exactly this kind of services. Very good. What's the name of the company? Uh, maybe, sir, Mitel or Mitel. something okay. else. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, so, and wh where is your home uh, home district? Uh, it's uh, Madaripur, sir. Madaripur. Okay. In 2005, these small uh, farms, they were all operating. Uh, in very uh, small, like the Mudit Dokans, uh, in a small geographical area. But the nature of the industry is such that the large farms will ultimately eat up those small farms. How? They will either merge, two farms merge together. For example, uh, there was a national company in Japan, there was Panasonic. They merged and became National Panasonic. This was in the 70s. Another one is, that the large firms buy up the small firms. This is called acquisition. Now, what happens in mergers and acquisitions? You tell me from common sense. If large firms end up buying small firms or the various firms end up merging, then the number of firms more, uh, uh, start, to be, uh, start to reduce in the market, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is known as consolidation. Consolidated markets, a relevant market whose number of firms has declined over time because firms have been they've been acquitted much or there have been buyouts. One example was the telecom industry that I uh, told you. Today, we have only four uh, telephone carriers, Ramin Phone, and they are all national carriers. Ramin Phone, uh, Roby, uh, Banglalink, and our national carrier, uh, Teletox, sir. That's it. We don't have any other carriers. Ranks has gone out of business. I, I, I had a Ranks telecom uh, te telephone at one time. And I used it for two years and then found out that the company went, uh, uh, went past. The same thing has happened to the cigarette and tobacco industry. Do you know how many uh, companies uh, sell cigarettes in Bangladesh, in Dhaka City? Does anybody know? No, one sir, is at, at the same brand, sir. No, 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 not brands. Uh, uh, British American Tobacco Company Max, and, then British Japan. and then Japan, uh, Japan Tobacco Company and Philip Morris. There's a there, there's Philip Morris is basically Japan Tobacco. Also Alpha Tobacco Company. Akis okay. also is there, sir. Akis, Akis is acquired by GTI. So oh, you see, oh, all right, all right. has acquired it. So what has happened over time in the cigarette industry? The number of firms has declined. 
So we also want to look at this type of uh, market structure uh, uh, and then think why these things have happened in the context of Bangladesh or in the context of some other country. Okay. Next one is substitutes and complements. Please stop it. We have been obsessed with substitutes and complements in our discussion of elasticity of demand. Okay. If a firm can restrict other substitutes from entering its relevant market, it can create market power for itself. If a firm can restrict complements from entering into its relative relevant market, notice I am using the word relevant, relevant, relevant. That means Apple is supplying uh, phones throughout the whole world. But when we come to a relevant market, Apple will be looking at the relevant market of Bangladesh, not the whole world. So if Apple can restrict availability of substitutes, if Apple can restrict availability of complements, then Apple will enjoy market power. How many, uh, uh, is there anybody in, uh, in our class who has a, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, an iPhone? Do we have iPhone uh, owners in our class? Yes, sir. Okay, great. So you're the only iPhone owner in the class? Me too, yes. sir. Uh, anybody else? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Have you noticed that iPhone has a special lightning cable? Yes, sir. And that lightning cable cannot be used in Android? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Or vice versa, you cannot use an Android cable in uh, uh, Apple phones, right? So yes, sir. What Apple has done, it has created a complement, the lightning cable. You cannot use Apple phone without lightning cable because you have to charge the battery. So what Apple has done, it has made it in such a way that you cannot use any other, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, lightning, uh, uh, the, you have to use an Apple uh, lightning cable to use an iPhone. Now, is this a clever thing to do always? That depends on the managerial skills of the firm. Because Apple can ma make it possible uh, to restrict uh, its complement, the lightning cable, Apple will do it. If Apple didn't have the capacity or the managerial skill to do it, then Apple wouldn't have done it. Why not? Making phones is one skill, making a cable is another skill. So if Apple concentrates on making phones, they may not be able to concentrate on making cables. Do you understand the logic that I'm trying to establish? Apple might be able oh, to make so. phones. Yes, sir. But that does not necessarily imply they will have the skill to make cables. What the logic? Sir, I don't know, sir. Apple to iPhone banai. এখন আইফোন বানাতে গিয়ে আমাদেরকে তো একটা ইয়ে বানাই কেবল তো ইউজ করতে হবে না ওই লাইটনিং কেবলটা यस স্যার আচ্ছা এখন ডাজ ইট নেসেসারিলি ইমপ্লাই জাস্ট বিকজ অ্যাপল ক্যান মেক অ্যাপল ফোনস আইফোনস দে দে উইল অলসো বি ইকুয়ালি এফিসিয়েন্ট ইন মেকিং লাইটনিং কেবলস মেবি নট মেবি নট বাট ইন দিস কেস অ্যাপল হ্যাজ বিন এবল টু ডু দ্যাট we will find some markets where this is not possible for the farms and why is it not possible for the farms these are the questions that we will ask we will do the same thing for substitutes that if uh, why are uh, why are uh, why are some certain farms in a relevant market in a relevant industry not able to restrict substitutes let me give you another example which we have discussed before in the, uh, in the last 5 weeks if we go to pizza hut and we order a drink it will never be coca cola it will be pepsi cola right yes sir yes sir you mane yeah, those who are from bangladesh they must have noticed uh, the our foreign friends uh, you may not uh, 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 identify but in bangladesh when when we go to pizza hut uh, if we are, uh, order a drink it will be a pepsi co drink it won't be coca cola so uh, and uh, whatever we go to eat at pizza hut we will definitely order a drink that's a compliment so over there what uh, pepsi has successfully done they have 
teamed up with uh, uh, the, uh, uh, Pizza Hut and they said that, okay, you uh, su supply only our drinks and nobody else's. So this is how you are restricting entrance into a market by restricting availability of substitutes and also availability of complements. Now, let's see what you guys think. How many firms are there in Karam Bazaar? A lot of firms are there. Okay, uh, uh, how, do you, how do you define lot? 10, 15, 20, 50, 100? Sir, more or, than uh, 100. More than 100, sir. More, more than, than 100s. Okay, we are going into the hundreds units. How many units of hundreds do you want to say? Fish salad. Say 200? What, sir? How many fish sellers do you think Karam Bazar has? 200? Oh, yes, 200? Sir. yes, sir. Okay. Maybe. 200. Okay, we'll stop at 200, okay? Now, okay. Uh, why is it that no... Uh, if you want to start selling fish, can you just go and sell it at Karam Bazar? Maybe no, no sir. sir. We have to take some permissions. We have to take... They have a uh, we are very familiar with a, a political word called syndicates. Yes. What is a syndicate? Syndicate automatically restricts other firms from entering their relevant market. There are fish sellers in Dhaka City. Some sell in New Market, some sell in Karam Bazaar, some sell a, a, a other places of Dhaka City. Okay. But in the Karam Bazaar, there are two uh, things that restrict the entry. Number one, there may be a club to which you have to belong, whether you call it a syndicate or whatever. Another is, Aron Bazaar has a capacity like any other economic activity. It cannot sustain more than a certain number of fish sellers. That could be 200, that could be 300. After that, will uh, new fish sellers uh, have an incentive to enter the market when they know that this market is saturated? No, sir. So when we are looking at a uh, 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 threat of entry, then the first question is, how many firms can enter this market? That question de de uh, depends on what is the relevant market of all the firms? What is the capacity of the firms? How much demand is available to absorb uh, their supply? If we ask this question, then we definitely have a certain number of uh, uh, farms. It could be 200 per fish seller, it could be 300, that doesn't matter. There has to be an upper limit. Now, if I'm a fish seller, I know that uh, this uh, Karan Bazaar uh, can't support more than 200 sellers. And there's already 200 sellers. I will not have an incentive to enter the market. So my uh, entrance is uh, uh, not at threat for Karan Bazaar. Another thing th that we automatically, this is a non-economic argument, that is, uh, we think about the syndicates. They all came up and they said, okay, uh, the, the, these people belong to us, but only they can sell fish in Karamaza. This is also possible. And this, or this type of market uh, uh, arrangement where they try to restrict the number of farms uh, is widely uh, observed in, in many places, okay? So what we are going to look at is why some group of farms resort to this type of strategy. Or how do they do it? How can they successfully do it in the context of different industries? Now, like we said, how do we define uh, farms in uh, our analysis? As sellers. Dhaka Wasa, Chitawang Wasa are monopolies. Okay, in Dhaka city and Chitawang city. But when they are, they are uh, each farm is a buyer. They also buy. They don't, uh, they don't, uh, what do you call it? They don't have a monopsony power in the, uh, in, uh, in the market where they buy inputs. So it could be that Dhaka Wasa is uh, using some special pumps which require a special uh, component. That component is supplied by only one company. What will happen then? Dhaka Wasa buys some pumps and that pump needs a special type of uh, mechanism which is supplied in Bangladesh by only one company. So the, sir, the price of the uh, components can be higher, sir. Yes. So in that case, Akawasa can be held at hostage. 
they might be forced to buy a particular comp uh, component because whoever the seller is, uh, let me give you how many types of mobiles are there in Bangladesh? Car mobiles, do, do we have too many sellers? No, sir, only few. Very few. You see, there are lots of car companies in Bangladesh. There are lots of people who own private cars and also commercial cars. But when we think about uh, mobile, okay, for the car, you will find that there are very few suppliers. So, say a BRTC, our national, uh, our uh, 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 government uh, bus service, it's a huge network. But when they come to the mobile, they they are uh, they can be held hostage to a few uh, specific companies, right? So yes. we're going to look at the market powers or the market problems that these firms have, monopoly firms, when they become buyers. Okay. What do we have now? Ah. Who was thinking about uh, uh, in your, uh, in somebody's neighborhood, how many uh, people, I mean, if you have a question, I say, that the neighborhood is, how many people do we have in the class who have only three uh, shops in their in neighborhood? Is there anybody that uh, you have only three uh, shops in your neighborhood, grocery shops? Maybe no, sir. Okay, then, then two. So, there are lots of options available all the time. No, no, but in your particular neighborhood, how many grocery shops are, uh, are there? Three, four, not more than that. More than four, sir. Sir, more than four. I no, more than four, sir. sir. More than four, sir. Sir, okay, sir but... I have ten just right in front of my house. Yeah. Just ten. Where, where, where do you live? You have ten? Uh, sir, uh, Mirpur Act. Oh so, okay, so right in my okay, your, your one is a special case, but normally in a neighborhood, we don't expect more than two or three uh, grocery shops. The point of this is in a relevant market, when we have few sellers, when a seller makes a decision, the seller has to think about the responses, what other people will do. Textbooks always talk about uh, big uh, farms like Grameen Corn and Roby. If Grameen phone is going to launch a product, it has to think what response Roby will make and vice versa. This same concept can be applied in your relevant market. If uh, one grocery shop starts selling Arun milk, he has to think that how quickly the other person will also start selling milk. The two grocery shops haven't sold milk at all, so one, uh, one of them uh, decides to sell, start selling milk. What do you think the other person will do? Will he uh, uh, just let him sell milk or he will also want to sell milk as well as a response? He will also sell milk. If, he, if both of them know that there is a demand for milk in the neighborhood, right? So the main thing is when we have few uh, sellers in our relevant market, whether that is Grammy phone versus Gobi in, uh, in the national context of Bangladesh or whether that's two grocery shops, in our neighborhood. They have to think about rival tactics. This is the uh, term that your uh, textbook uses. This is also known as strategy. So if there are two firms, say X and Y, whatever tactics X employs, it has to think about the response uh, that Y will do and vice versa. This type of decision making is known as interdependent. That means my decision depends on yours and vice versa, the reverse is also true. Whatever decision you take also influences me. So this type uh, uh, of marketing uh, employs a, a technique called game theory. Have you heard the word game theory? No, sir. Okay, no problem. That's a, that's a wonderful start. But now you've heard it, right? Sir, I'm sorry, sir. But the, uh, uh, our lady friend, she said that she's never heard it, but now you've heard it, right? Yes, sir. It seems like somebody, some um, like during this competition, somebody will win. Okay. So, some, so. sometimes uh, you'll find out that nobody wins. Okay. okay. So, 
So game theory is just we're going to play a game between two people or three people, whatever, a very small number of people. And then we think about the responses, what the other person will do. Okay, so that uh, we'll do the, uh, the, that type of there. Now, barriers of exit. If it is easy to enter a market, it will also be easy to leave the market. If you decide tomorrow morning that you want to sell cigarettes and uh, eggs in front of your house on the street, you can, uh, you can enter this market at any moment. If after two days you decide, no, I don't like it, you, you can just come back. Because when entrance is low, exit is also very easy. But if you uh, decide to open a telecom company, can you get out of the telecom company just like that uh, in uh, six weeks later when you find out that it's a bad decision? No, sir. No, sir. You can't. This is why sunk costs do affect our decision making. In the first part of the course, we said that sunk costs don't uh, uh, affect our decision making. So we decided to uh, come to BRAC to do an MBA program. Before we had lots of options. Once we um, have entered the, the program, it's a sunk cost. But in our analysis of markets, we will see that uh, the higher the entrance cost, the higher the exit cost. So, and that is, this is, this will be based on the concept of sunk cost, which we will modify a little bit and extend a little bit. Okay. In uh, business schools and also in economics, we have this myth that uh, the more market share a firm enjoys, okay, the more market power it has. But suppose there are only two firms in a market and each has 50% market share. Isn't 50% a big market share? Yes, sir, it's big. Big, but if both the two, if there are only two firms supplying and both of them have 50% market share, does it, make any, does it make any sense? No, sir, it's the equal share. They have equal shares and there will be fierce competition in this market. So market share in relation to somebody else, if it is large, then we have market power. Uh, for example, we had this console, con, um, uh, fragmented market where we said that there were be some big firms. They, uh, these big firms may uh, control 80% of the total market share and there will be many small firms. They console, control only 20% of the market share. So. In the small market, we have one type of behavior. In the large market, we have another type of behavior. So uh, market share doesn't not necessarily uh, uh, mean that you know, it's, uh, it, it will be beneficial for us. Okay, now uh, let me stop share. Is there any question up until now before we move to the next part? No, sir. So uh, uh, can, can I move to the next part? Sir, can you explain explain the game theory again, sir? I, I have, have to some... explain it to you. Yes, sir. Okay, we are going to look at game theory in detail later on. Let me, uh, do you have a brother or sister? Sorry, sir? Do you have a brother or sister, a sibling? Yes, sir, I do have a brother. So yeah, uh, you are two, uh, two people, uh, two, uh, uh, from a Okay, now so suppose your mother uh, brings a cake uh, at home and she divides it exactly in half. Don't you think that your mother has given your uh, other brother a little bit more, two crumbs more than yourself? Yes, sir. Definitely. When you were children, you definitely used to think that your mother gives your other brother a little bit more. And your other yes, sir. Think, think the same thing, right? That your mother is always bring yes, you and uh, he's not getting anything, right? Okay. Yes, sir. Now, let's play the game. Uh, or uh, After uh, your mother has observed this, that you guys are fighting, so she knows that she uh, cuts the cake half out. So one day what she does, she brings the cake and she gives you the knife and she says, you cut it into two pieces, but your other brother will choose the first piece. What will you do? How will you cut the cake? Equally 50, sir. Sir, equally 50, sir. Very perfect. 
Uh, yeah, won't you won't you cut it exactly 50 50 yes sir yes sir yes. now if you cut it 60 40 what will happen? Your, other, your brother will take the 60 60 percent yes sir you lose right so yes sir whatever decision you take is being influenced by what your brother is going to choose if your mother That's gave the, the same thing to your brother that you uh, and, and tells your brother okay you take the cake you uh, here's the knife you cut it into two but your other brother he will take the first piece. He, your other brother will also do the same because his decision depends on what you are going to do. So this is game theory, basically, that my decision, whatever decision I take, has a response that depends on you. The reverse is also true. Whatever decision you take has a, a response which depends on me. Okay? Okay, sir. Got it, sir. Thank you. This is how, this is how I explained game theory to my daughter when she was five years old. So this was in sir, Kobe Boyongot theory, sir. <laughs> so, and uh, she was so five years at that time, and she said, uh, Ask me what are you doing? I said, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, preparing game theory for a class. And she uh, asked me very seriously, What is game theory? Then I thought, uh, How can I explain to a five year old kid? Then I gave her this example. And then she, like you guys, uh, solved the game. Yes, I'm going to cut it 50 50 because I don't want my other brother, cousin. To get a little bit more than what uh, than myself, okay, sir. Thank you. <laughs> sir, <laughs> sir, apni kya mande itar business kono business er upor base ko act example dile arik to clear hoyto. Okay, for example, if uh, Gamin phone decides to reduce its tariff by two percent tomorrow morning, do you think uh, Robi is going to stand uh, uh, idle and watch? Maybe Robi also gonna do the same thing. So ultimately, what will happen? Neither Gramin phone nor Robi is going to make a profit. If I reduce, if I'm the only person who's going to reduce 2% and uh, you know, uh, others are not going to respond, then I'm going to benefit. Yes, sir. But if the others are going to you know, reciprocate what I'm doing, they're going to follow what I'm doing, then my reducing the price is not going to be beneficial, will it? Right, sir. It won't it's not going to be beneficial. Be. For example, that same example that we gave for the two grocery shops in the neighborhood, uh, they don't sell milk. One decides to start selling milk. You think the other person is not going to start selling milk if there is demand for milk in the neighborhood? Uh, yes, sir. They will also sell that. So what happens? Uh, 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 you know, uh, there will be responses. We, we'll, we'll do uh, quite a, a lot of examples like this. Okay. But for the time being, so this is what game theory is. Okay. Remember the cake cutting game. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. That's, Understood. Uh, that's, that's a beautiful game. That's how I uh, made, made my daughter understand. Mm, yes, sir. Okay. Now what we are going to do, how many types of markets are there? There, uh, Right here, I've written five. There are more markets than what you see here. Definitely. But perfect competition is the benchmark. We have said this many times before in the last five weeks that benchmark is the most ideal situation. The ideal situation never exists in reality. 98.4 degrees Fahrenheit is the ideal temperature of a human being. 120 by 80. This is the ideal blood pressure for a human being, right? 120 by 80. And, All right, sir. And uh, 98.4. Now, if we take everybody's temperature and everybody's BP, accidentally we will find one person who has 98.4 and 120 by 80 BP. But we use these uh, two indicators as a benchmark. If, it, if there is too much deviation from the uh, 98.4 plus minus or 120 by 80, we get worried and we go to the doctor. So, to look at a, a market, to understand how a market looks like, how a market behaves, we need to have an uh, we need to have a, a, a benchmark, an ideal situation. That is known as perfect competition, and the implication of perfect competition is not a single buyer or seller has any market power. How can this be possible? This can be possible by these five assumptions. If there are many buyers, oh sorry, if there are many buyers and many sellers in a market, 
which is highly fragmented. Does any single buyer or a group of buyer, can they influence the market? No. Can a single seller or a group of sellers influence the market? No. So no market uh, buyer or seller, how will we define the market as by number of sellers or by number of buyers? They can influence the market, okay? Now, if we are buying Samsung A series phones, whatever I buy from a uh, 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 registered seller, if I go to another seller, uh, 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 will the product change? No, sir. Now you can come to an argument, yes, uh, this A71, this uh, IMEI number is so and so, another or A71 has a different IMEI number. But that, does that make a difference? That, that really doesn't matter. That doesn't so because matter. the product quality is the same. Product quality is the same because we're selling or transacting a standardized commodity. Okay, so when the sellers and the buyers are selling uh, or buying a standardized commodity, everybody is seeing the same thing as identical in their own eyes. This is known as homogeneous or identical goods. So if, if, if we are selling uh, rice, say atok chal or pulao chal, or uh, say, you, you know, uh, iri, whatever, we are, everybody is selling and buying the same rice. So nobody can make any influence in the total market. So this is another condition. Now think, there are many buyers and many sellers. They're all fragmented. They're all selling the same item. Can anybody influence price? No, sir. They can't. What is independent decision making? Just the opposite of interdependent. That whatever, they, if I decide to sell more eggs, will that uh, uh, affect the total market of Dhaka City? No, sir. No, sir. Very small player. So this, when decisions are independent, that means whatever decision I take doesn't influence anybody in the relevant market. The reverse is also true. Whatever decisions a firm takes doesn't influence anybody in the relevant market, then decision makings are independent. The fourth one is symmetric information. Okay, let me give you an example. In front of uh, a shop, it's written, it can ghee power jai for five ta 500 taka kg. Will you believe it? No, no sir. Why, why won't you believe it? Sir, well, I think the regular price is now around 1500 taka per kg. For okay, so if I, if I uh, uh, put up a si signboard that uh, I'm selling ghee for taka 500, why won't you come to me? Because yes, I think uh, there will quality. be some quality uh, difference in there. It's to sell ghee at 500 taka. Because uh, to make one ke uh, uh, kg of ghee, you need something like 12 liters of milk. So how much is 12 liters of milk going to cost? It's going to cost a lot. Okay? So in Around this 600 case, to... 600 or 700 uh, 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 over here, one input is already uh, so much. So I cannot, by definition, sell any ghee by four five hundred taka per kilo. If I am, then I'm selling something else. Now, what happens if we sell second-hand Samsung and iPhones? Do the sellers and the buyers have the same set of information? We have discussed this before. No, sir. The seller knows more about the actual quality of the product than the buyer, right? Definitely. Yes, sir. Yes. So. In perfect competition, if both the buyer and the seller have the same set of information about the quality of the good, can the buyer or the seller, uh, I mean, you know, cheat the other party? No, sir. So uh, if they can't cheat the other party, then neither buyer nor seller can influence the outcome. So the fourth condition is that we have many buyers and sellers, they're all fragmented, they're all selling the same thing. They're making independent decisions and both the buyers and sellers, they have the same set of information about the quality, quality. Later on, we'll in, uh, in, uh, add performance of the product, but that, that will come later. But if they have the same uh, information about the quality, then nobody can influence the market. 
Second thing is, if it is easy to enter a market, it will also be easy to exit a market. This, uh, the, we don't need this condition, but think about this all for uh, or the first four, what will happen? The price of the good will not be determined by a single producer, a single seller or a group of sellers. It will be de determined by all the sellers fragmented in a fragmented situation. How much eggs will be sold tomorrow in Dhaka city? How many bananas will be sold in Dhaka city is not determined by a single seller or a group of sellers. Yes, if more eggs are sold in Dhaka city tomorrow, the price of eggs will fall. If less eggs are sold in Dhaka city tomorrow, the price of egg, uh, eggs will rise. But does a single producer or a group of pro producer, can they uh, uh, determine how many eggs or how many bananas, bananas will be sold in Dhaka city? No, sir. They can't. No, sir. So what happens is when we have perfect competition, the price, that means the unit, uh, uh, unit price and the quantity at which uh, all the uh, goods will be sold will be determined by market forces. Finally, this thing your uh, uh, textbook is not going to write. Maybe after 10 years, they'll start writing. That is under perfect competition, we are looking at commodity markets. How did we define commodity markets? We defined commodity markets by a market where standardized good is being sold. So if we are looking at shobri gola, shobri bananas, everybody is selling the same thing. If we are looking at uh, chini chompa cola, everybody is in, selling the same thing. Okay? Uh, right? Yes, yes, sir. So this is the ideal situation of perfect competition. After the midterm, we are going to look at deviations from uh, each of them uh, 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 with various case studies. Okay, so after midterm, we start with monopolistic competition and uh, monopoly. And uh, we also look at uh, 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 where markets where assumptions of perfect competition will fail. Now, can I uh, give a five minute break now? Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Minute break is 7.28 now. We'll come back at 7.35. Then we'll discuss about the midterm, okay? Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, we stay connected, right? Sorry? We stay connected in the link, right? Sorry, uh, uh, can you say, say again? I didn't, uh, uh, sir, we, uh, we stay connected in the link. You are not going to shut down the Zoom, right? No, I'm not going to I'm just going to shut in this particular session. Oh, yes, sir. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not leaving. I'll okay. Just, uh, okay. Then, then I'll stop the video and uh, mute. You, uh, everybody go and have a cup of tea. Okay, okay, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. The main reason for stopping is because I want to see who won the toss in the fifth T20I between India and England. Okay. <laughs> That's the main reason. Okay then. Okay. Okay. Uh, we'll we'll, we'll uh, start again.